Uh, my name is Pedro, I'm from Purdue University, my supervisor is Aniket Kate, and I'm here to talk about how to link wallets and early mice transactions in the Ripple network. Let's first see what is actually a credit network. So a credit network is used to represent trust between users via credit allocation. Sure. Uh, so as I said, like um, a credit network is used to represent trust between users using credit allocations. Let's see through an example. So imagine that we have two friends, Alice and Bob, and Alice has a dog that we are gonna call Coco. And Alice has to go out of town and ask Bob to take care uh, to take care of Bob of Coco. Uh, after she returns, she wants to pay for the service to uh, to Bob, and she decides to pay that in DOG currency. And in this manner, we have created the first pets currency in the system. Uh, this situation can be represented in the credit network using a directed edge from Alice to Bob with a weight of 20. And as you can imagine, this process can be repeated several times between different users to pay for different services, and a complete credit network can be created. In this work, we focus on the Ripple credit network. The key idea here is that the accounts represent not only users, but also represent banks like CBW and Cross Rivers in America. We also have here in Europe the case of Feeder and Santander. Ripple also has the uh, Bitcoin gateways that allows the integration of Bitcoin into the Ripple network. In this manner, Ripple supports several currencies. So in Ripple, we have fiat currencies like euros, dollars, pounds. We also have cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And it's even possible to have user-defined currencies like dog, cats, pigs, or whatnot. The idea is that Ripple uh, has several advantages over the current banking system. Uh, and the transactions can be, done, can be performed much faster, so they take a few seconds instead of several days. We can perform intercurrency transactions all over the world with a really tiny fee. Mm -hmm. And regarding integrity, banks are currently in the banking system the only one that checks for the integrity of the transactions, while in Ripple, everybody can check the uh, transactions in Ripple actually publicly verifiable. At this moment, you can wonder, as Coco is doing here, if we have Bitcoin today already, why do we need Ripple at all? Well, let's compare them. Conceptually, they are different. So Bitcoin is a currency and allows payments, transactions only in Bitcoin, while Ripple is a transaction network. As we saw, it's possible to perform transactions in, in any currency. Moreover, they differ in how they transfer, uh, the transfer of funds between accounts. So in Bitcoin, uh, they allow direct transactions between any two wallets in the system, while in Ripple, transactions between a sender and a receiver can be done only by a path from the sender to the receiver with enough credit. Another difference is the scalability of the system. So the permissionless uh, nature of Bitcoin makes the consensus protocol really slow, and the addition of transactions into, into the Bitcoin blockchain can be done only at a limited rate. However, in the Ripple system, the, nature, the local nature of the transactions make the addition of transactions into the Ripple ledger much faster and makes the system more scalable. Nevertheless, both systems have a common point, as that transactions are publicly verifiable. In the case of Ripple, this public verifiability is enabled by the fact that all the transactions are public, also, all the credit links between any two users are also public. In Ripple terms, these two pieces of information are called the Ripple ledger. Uh, accounts in Ripple are uh, defined or represented by a pseudonym. As we know already, pseudonymity doesn't really give privacy. Actually, given one pseudonym, it's possible to reconstruct all the transactions that are performed by such a pseudonym. Therefore, we have what is called linkable anonymity. And in the Bitcoin world, it has been shown that Link, uh, linkable anonymity is prone to dynamization attacks. Now, the natural question that came to us is, uh, given the differences between Bitcoin and Ripple system, it is privacy a real problem in the current Ripple system? And if so, can we really measure that, that privacy issue? Well, the, the answer is yes, and in order to, to answer these questions, we propose two different heuristics. Let me show you first the simplest one. The idea here is that we want to link wallets from different systems that belong to the same user. Uh, let me show you how it works through a story. So imagine that Alice has some Bitcoin in the Bitcoin system and she wants to pay Bob for some service. However, Bob hasn't heard too much about uh, Bitcoin so far and he wants to receive the payment in euros. So what she can do? Well, one of the things that she can do is take the Bitcoins, transfer them into the Ripple transaction, in the Ripple network, sorry, and then perform an intercurrency transaction. In order to do that, 
what C can use, what in ripple terms is called a ripple gateway. This example, dividend Rippler. A ripple gateway is a node that has an account in the ripple system and another account in other system, in this case, Bitcoin, and allow the transfer of funds between these two systems. So following with our example, what Alice can do is send the Bitcoins to the gateway, and this is locked in a transaction in the Bitcoin blockchain. Once the gateway sees that has received the Bitcoins from Alice, the gateway will go to the Ripple network and perform the corresponding transactions in the Ripple network. This manner, uh, the gateway sends the credit to Alice. As we have seen before, this transaction is locked in what is called the Ripple ledger. Now, even Alice will have different pseudonyms in the Bitcoin system and in the Ripple system. Linking these two transactions together, we know that pseudonym A and pseudonym D must belong to the same user. And similarly, pseudonym B, pseudonym C must belong to the same user. And as you can imagine, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So in, the, in the paper, we discuss how to link wallets to a user, not only from the Bitcoin system, but from any other cryptocurrency that uses a publicly blockchain or a publicly available blockchain. The second heuristic that we propose capture a really natural activity that we do in our daily lives. And let me ask you a question. So how many of you is carrying right now more than 100,000 uh, euros in your wallets? <laughs> so, seems like not too many people, 2%. So, <laughs> so I think what would be a more realistic case, like probably we carry around 100 euros and we use this wallet to pay for daily activities. So we will pay, for example, to go to a restaurant and pay for, for food, or we will go to pay for the ticket of theater. Once we run out of, of money, what we do is like we go to the bank, we withdraw some money, and then we put this money on the wallet again. Well, this mechanism is also uh, performed in the Ripple network. A gateway, for example, Bitstamp in this case, will create a wallet where it's handling or issuing credit to all the clients in the system, all his clients. But however, this wallet, so this wallet, this wallet is called the cold wallet. However, this wallet is not used to perform the daily transactions with the clients. Instead, the gateway creates another wallet connected to the first one, and this one is called the hot wallet. The hot wallet is the actual one that is being used to transfer credit to the clients whenever it's needed. One, one reason to do that is because now if the attacker compromises the hot wallet, only 200 euros in this case are at stake or at risk, but the credit of the clients are still uh, not vulnerable. For that reason, it's an incentive of, uh, the, of the gateway to keep the, whole, the cold and the hot wallet unlinkable. Otherwise, an attacker could link them together and they become more vulnerable. Then Coco had the great idea, well, let's try to link together hot and cold wallets. Let's see how we can do that. It turns out that it's not a really easy task. So if you look at the Ripple uh, ledger, what you find out is there is a bunch of pseudonyms connected to each other and a bunch of credit links between each other, and then a list of transactions between pseudonyms. The idea of this heuristic is to uh, correlate these two pieces of information. And we can do it in the following manner. We know that the gold wallet of a gateway is being used to issue credit to the clients. So for that reason, we know that the cold wallets must have only outgoing links in the network. So therefore, the uh, pseudonym A should be the cold wallet of a gateway. We also know that the hot wallet is connected to the, to the cold wallet. In that manner, B, C, and D are potentially hot wallets. However, now the question is, which is the actual hot wallet? Because we don't know, pro most likely not all of them are used as hot wallets. Well, we, we know that the cold wallets must top off the hot wallet periodically. So we can then look at the list of transactions and see that A is actually transacting to B, therefore B must be the hot, the hot wallet. But we can even further verify that. The idea that we have seen before is that the hot wallet is the one used by the gateway to transfer credit to the clients. So if, look, if we look at the if we look at the list of transactions, we see that actually B is paying to D and to C. In that manner, we make sure that B is actually the hot wallet. Well, now we make Coco happy, so now he knows, well, great, so A and B must belong to the same, to the same user. Well, once we define this heuristic, our, our next step was to 
apply this to rip it into the real Ripple network. And for that, the first thing we did is download the complete Ripple data. We, as, a, this, as of December 2015, we downloaded more than 170,000 wallets, more than 115 credit links, and a bit more than 17 million transactions. If you're interested in more recent statistics, they are uh, periodically updated in the webpage ripplecharts.com. Once we got the data, next step, take our heuristics and apply them into the Ripple data that we got. In our clustering process, we ended up with having almost 1,000 Ripple wallets, a bit more than 3,000 Bitcoin wallets, and a bit more than 1,000 altcoin wallets. For those of you who doesn't know, altcoin here means all other cryptocurrencies apart from Bitcoin. Our cluster wallets were part of almost 1 million Ripple transactions, and these constitute more or less the 7% of all the transactions in the Ripple network. You might wonder at this time that this number seems a bit small, and there are several reasons for that. The first one is that the Ripple network is a really new network and it's growing today, so we know that there are several banks, several gateways that are adopting that now. So we believe that over the period when they uh, use the network more frequently, the network will become more stable and then we will have better numbers in our clustering. The other reason is that some of the gateways are not actually following this hot core wallet mechanism. However, it has been shown in the Ripple community that those gateways that don't follow this mechanism are in danger of losing their, their wallets and therefore running out of credit. Therefore, we believe that over the period, most of the gateways, if not all, will apply this hot core mechanism and then our heuristic will apply to them as well. Uh, for, those for those gateways that are applying this hot code wallet mechanism, we perform an animation process. In this graph, we show in the x-axis some of the gateways that we studied, and in the y-axis, we show the number of transactions that they have been performing. In green, we show which are the transactions associated to the gateway associated to publicly known wallets, or wallets that are publicly associated to the gateway. However, our, in our denomination process, we figure out that wallets uh, or gateways were doing really many more transactions. In particular, we saw that bit, for BitSum, we were able to denonymize as many transactions as they were publicly known before. Another interesting point is that if you look at gateways like Crispan, Dividend Rippler, or DIM, and if you look at their publicly known transactions, it seems that they don't have too much relation between each other. However, after our denonymization process, you can see that their wallets were linked together, therefore they, share, they might share the same owner. The Ripple community actually has verified that Dividend Rippler and DIM belong to the same person. We wanted further to verify these heuristics and we contacted these gateways with our results and we got the confirmation from two of them, from Bitstamp and from RippleFox. Indeed, that's the reason why RippleFox is uh, all in green. So before we contacted them the results, there were some hot wallets that were not public, but after our after we contacted them, they decided to publish all of them, so now all their wallets are publicly known. Here we have shown the dynamization of several gateways, but there are many other uses in the system. How can we perform a dynamization process at large scale? And the idea of Coco in this case is what happens if we put a machine of our own inside the Ripple network? What I mean by that is that the Ripple ledger is maintained by a set of servers that are connected to each other. Now, when a client wants to perform a transaction and include it in the Ripple ledger, what it needs to do is connect to one of the servers. Then Alice creates a transaction in which she specifies her sender wallet and other fields necessary for the transaction. Then she sends such a transaction to the Ripple server. At this moment, the Ripple server sees the sender wallet because this transaction is sent in the clear, and also the Ripple server knows the IP address of the client. Therefore, this wallet is then anonymized. And as you can imagine, if Alice has several, several Ripple wallets and use the same server to send transactions for the different Alice wallets, all of them are gonna be then anonymized. The question now is who runs those servers? Who are able to perform this anonymization attack? Well, the Ripple company is actually running some of those servers, 
but they are not the only one. So we have several, some of the gateways like Bitsum also running some of these people servers. And even companies like Microsoft is given part of this, their computation power to run off uh, one or two of these servers. Once we have this work, the, the idea or the question will be, okay, now what do we do? Which are the next steps in our, in our work? So currently I'm interning at the Ripple company and I can say that I showed this work to them and this triggered really interesting conversation about the need of privacy in the Ripple network. We also have seen that banks actually are demanding privacy for using the, the Ripple network. We also shared our results with the Ripple community and they, they were really interested in that and I really encourage you to go to this link where we have all the information about the Ripple forums, our webpage and more information about the paper. And we believe that this work should inspire the use of privacy enhancing technologies in the credit networks. From our side, we created the first privacy preserving credit network based on trusted hardware in a paper accepted at NDSS 2015. And if you are interested in more details, tomorrow we are going to give in hot pets another talk in which we show another approach to have a privacy preserving credit network. But obviously we need more research in this area, it's an interesting area, and obviously uh, yeah, it's, it has impact in, pra in practice that we saw because banks, gateways, and every user using the network is claiming privacy. And in the last 30 seconds I have, uh, let me show you which is the pain home message from this talk. We have seen so far that Ripple allows worldwide, fast, cheap, and intercurrency transactions all over the world. We have seen so far the first privacy study that studies the publicly available Ripple ledger. We have defined two heuristics that allow to link wallets not only from the uh, Ripple network, but also from different cryptocurrencies. And finally, we have used our heuristics result in order to anonymize businesses that are running right now in the Ripple network. And with that, I would like to finish. Thank you for your attention, and we're happy to take questions.